why the Cowboys must submit the Washington Commanders to be successful in the playoffs. I'm going to talk about that more in this video, but before I do, don't forget to SLC. Share, like, and comment on this video. Let me know what you think. Follow Boss Cowboy Sports on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. So, in order for the Cowboys to submit to the Washington Commanders, we need to understand a few things. But before I get into that, I got to give you guys the lay of the land. Think about the NFC East. You have the Cowboys, you have the Eagles, you have the Commanders, and you have the Giants. Now, three out of those four teams are in the playoffs. That's fantastic. We actually have one of the strongest divisions overall in the whole NFL. Now, while this game is important, and I'm going to explain a lot about that in a second, you got to know, first of all, that the Washington Commanders are the odd man out. They are not going to the playoffs. So it doesn't matter to them about anything. We're playing against a team and a bunch of men that have absolutely nothing to do. And it would give them no greater joy than to beat the Cowboys the last game of the season before they went on vacation. I guarantee you that. So expect the Washington Commanders to come out and let it all hang out, to throw every single scenario, play, tactic, whatever the case might be, against the Cowboys to win, including what I think is a felonious injury report in order to psych the Cowboys out and to have us lower our guard and to, and to come into that game thinking that somehow it's going to be a walk in the park, which is absolutely a bunch of malarkey and it's not the case. And I hope no one believes that injury report, not for one second. So the very first reason why the Cowboys must submit these Washington commanders to have success in the playoffs is completely out of our control. Nevertheless, we got to deal with it. So the New York give the game away Giants, the word on the street is that they are going to rest their starters. Absolutely weak and despicable for this team who hadn't had success in the last several years to rest their starters and pretty much concede the game to the division leading Philadelphia Eagles. This means that more than likely the, 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 the Eagles are going to win that game. Meaning that that's all they gotta do to win the division and get home field advantage. Thus, meaning this, the Cowboys Unless some strange events happen, the Cowboys more than likely are going to play in the first round in the wild card, and they're going to play against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yay. So here's the deal. The very first reason, and I gave it to you already, is that, hey, these New York give the game away giants are going to rest their starters. So they're gonna give the division pretty much to Philadelphia. Now, the second reason, which is now very, very important for us to pay attention to and understand the dynamics of this because of who we're playing. We play the Washington Commanders. The Washington Commanders have the fourth ranked overall defense in the NFL. Not bad. They give up around 312 yards a game. They allow about 116.4 rushing yards a game. And they have got 42 sacks on the year. And they average giving up 21 points a game. That's good for fourth overall in terms of total defense. So the Cowboys are going to have to really be sharp. And because we play against Man, one of the better defensive lines in the NFL, in particular, Payne and Josh Allen, which are probably the top defensive tackle tandem in the entire NFL. We're going to have to really be sharp and understand what it takes for us to effectively run the ball inside versus elite 
defensive lines. And this is the start of that. That will be a critical component and a critical part of our success in the playoffs that we're able to run against a strong front. The Washington Commanders have a 4-3 defense. Guess who else has a 4-3 defense? You guessed it. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers also have a 4-3 defense and they are good for number seven overall in total defense in the NFL. They give up about 320 yards a game, about 117 uh, passing yards a game, and they average about, they give up less points per game than the Washington Commanders. They give up only about 20 and a half points per game. This is a perfect comp. This is a perfect dress rehearsal and seeing how we're gonna deal with a team that has a strong front four, front seven. Now I will say, and I'll get more into this for sure next week, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have much better linebackers than the Washington Commanders. However, overall in terms of the defensive line, especially the defensive ends, the Washington Commanders are superior. Now, the Tampa Bay Bucks are pretty good inside, especially with the Earth Eater, Vita Vea, who can take up easily two blockers, sometimes three. So we gotta be able to deal with that and we gotta practice, practice being effective against that type of front in particular that plays cover two on the back end as well. So we gotta be ready and we gotta take advantage of this game and we need to win it. We need to submit the Washington Commanders and we need to win it convincingly, all right? So, number three, Washington has a good underneath timing passing game and they try to take advantage of it with play action pass and they have a couple good receivers that can make some plays underneath on you, I'm telling you. So that is something that we need to see from our defense is we have to practice discipline and we have to practice integrity and also responsibility from the linebackers to the safeties to the defensive backs in terms of coverage. We need to see this. We need to see a decent play action team that we have to just play our fundamentals and responsibilities so that we can bottle up the underneath coverage because the underneath coverage allows you to complete short passes primarily for first downs. And what you saw last week with the Washington Commanders, listen, these guys played the, the Cleveland Browns now, they end up losing the game, but they had a 21-play drive. Think about that. A 21-play drive that resulted in a touchdown. And those guys did a great job with the underneath game of converting on third down. The Cowboys have to get off the field on third down in order to be successful in these playoffs. Because right after that, you got Tom Brady and they throw tons of underneath timing passes, swing routes, things of that nature, and he uses that, and that team uses it very effectively, and also some power running to convert third downs. So again, this is the perfect comp and dress rehearsal for the type of things that we're gonna see moving forward in the playoffs coming up extremely soon, as in next week, all right? Number four, but not least, we have to manage what the Washington Commanders will try to do, and they don't do it as good as Tampa, but they're gonna do play action pass and take deep shots versus single coverage. And if it's one thing that the Cowboys have struggled with some this year is the deep ball versus single coverage. From Anthony Brown, right, to Boss Man Fat, AKA Kelvin Joseph, to a couple others, we've had some shots down the field and wide receivers making plays on us. And so we gotta sure that up this week. We gotta be tight on that this week because I'm telling you what Tom Brady's gonna do on play action pass is he's gonna be better than the Washington Commanders is gonna be and he's gonna throw that ball deep to Mike Evans. As a matter of fact, he did it three times. Three touchdowns to Mike Evans last week versus the Carolina Panthers, all on deep routes and single coverage. 
So guys, we have to, we have to force the commanders to submit. We must submit them like an MMA fighter. We have to break them in order to be ready and have success in these playoffs. So if you like content like this, follow Boss Cowboy Sports on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. You can follow me, the OC100, on Twitter. And until next time, see you.